Craft, and today we have finally reached episode 10, which I think is not that big of a milestone, but I'm still proud of it that I managed to get 10 episodes out. Okay, so so as you can see, what we're doing at the moment is uh, we're building the floor of this perimeter that we worked on last episode. Um, we've had this machine running here for about for roughly four or five hours at this point, and it's already built about and it's already built up a good amount of the, about a quarter of the floor, so we're expecting so we're expecting this to take around this to take to take around until next morning at the very least to finish. Um, I finished crafting up. I finished crafting. So so after the episode last episode, I finished crafting up um, all the glass that was going to be needed, and and then I put them in, into here. As you can see, a lot of the glass has already been placed down. Um, and, and, and currently, like, we have fake players all over the server at the moment, AFK and random things. Um, in order to keep this area, in order to keep mobs from spawning in this area while we're building the floor, because if a mob were to spawn in here and kill, and kill the play, any of our players, that it would cause massive issues. Um, so, our so, so our solution was was to have a bot account stand next to a mob spawner for uh, uh, next to a mob spawner overnight. Which does the which does the job? As you can see, the mob cap is currently filled to 320, and as and, and as a result, and as a result, there are zero mobs spawning in this area, which is very helpful. So basically, the way this so basically the way this machine works is basically glass will come down this water stream and then get sent to the player who's standing here, who will basically place down the glass blocks, which will. Which will basically then, and then what happens is basically this machine will basically have a conveyor system, which will take the blocks, which will take the blocks all, which will take the blocks all the way to the end, which is down here. So basically, once the block reaches, so basically once the blocks reaches the end, it will the piston at the front there will no longer be able to push, and then the whole machine will move forward. Yeah. So at the moment. Uh, at the mo uh, at the moment this whole uh, at the moment uh, at the moment doing this is taking up a lot of the server's performance as you can see you can see the server is running uh, is running below 20 tps so we can't really so we can't really do much at, so we so we won't really be able to do much on the server until this is done however once this is done we should have a very nice looking floor so I'll come back to see you when that's done Okay, so after several hours, the machine is finished, and now we have a nice glass floor all over the entire perimeter. And before I say, it, before, and before we do anything, let me just say that this just looks incredible. Like, like, you, like, like fun by the way. You can actually st like if I, if I stand at this and just look over the whole thing, it just looks like, like if I just get the right angle. It looks like it's all just glass. It just looks like it's all glass, and it and it's a very surreal experience. Okay, so um now okay so now the perimeter is more or less done. Uh, 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 we're, we're we're going to remove this machine here to salvage all the parts. We're not sure what to do with the world. E we're not sure what if we want to remove the world eater or not because it just take forever. But who knows if we if we want who knows if we want to do something 
in there. Maybe we'll remove the world leader. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, about over 24 hours of 24 hours worth of worth of man hours. Uh, the perimeter is finally done. This took way too long. However, since the end spawn building is going to take absolutely forever, I decided that it might be smarter that for the time being I am going to work on a bit of a smaller project for now. So you might remember this thing, which is our villager breeder that we built back in episode 2 of Civilcraft, so it was quite a while ago. And uh, we're actually going to have to replace this thing and actually have to bring in new villagers because if you notice, um, the villagers are gone and what happened here was that the villagers, all the villagers in here, somehow all turned into witches, all turned into witches, and we have no idea what happened, our best guess is that they got struck by lightning somehow, no idea how though, because because there's a roof in place, so yeah, um, we're going to have to get new villagers, however, I'm actually going to take this opportunity to actually remove this old breeder, and actually, uh, actually move, remove this old breeder, and build a new one that's underground, because honestly, this breeder just looks, is just extremely extremely ugly and it's just been an eyesore for so long but I just didn't I never really felt like getting rid of it because there were villagers in it but now that the villagers are gone uh, I just want to take this chance to just remove it and then just build a new one somewhere at least underground so that it won't be a huge eyesore and just won't get in the way Okay, so a few hours later, the Illager Breeder is gone and is now replaced with a much nicer looking build. Um, the build is definitely not finished yet, however, you can see the Villager Breeder, or at least the beginnings of it, is now down here. Uh, this is actually a different design than the old one, because the old one got broken in 1.16.2. So the only change here really is, um, uh, is the breeding chamber. And it also and it also made this a lot more sophisticated because before it would just the villagers would just be pushed into a room. Now um, the villagers will actually be put the baby villagers will be pushed into into I'm not sure if you can see it but there is an air gap right here. So basically they'll stay they'll stay there until they grow up. Then the head will be in the water. Then they'll swim up, get pushed over, and then they'll and then the water will push them in the corner here where a minecart can pick them up. And um, I don't have anything to switch this properly yet so. Basically, depending on which way the rail is going, they will either be sent up to the surface or they will be sent over here, which will drop down into a trading hall, which is to be built. So basically, if I follow this up here real quick, this will take you up to the nether, a nether portal here, which I which is which I actually which I actually linked up. I should spend a while linking up because if he goes to the nether real quick. You will see that we now have two portals. This one uh, have two portals. Uh, uh, two portals. This one will take you to here, and the other one will take will take will take you to the portal there. So now the villager breeder is more or less done. Of course, I have to put a roof over it so that uh, if thunder strikes, we won't get a witch in here. But yeah, we're gonna. But yeah. So now the next step is to get villagers in here which is always the hardest part of a villager breeder. If you remember back in the first episode of Civilcraft, uh, I spent many, many hours getting the villagers for our old breeder that are unfortunate that are unfortunately dead now. So yeah, so we're gonna have to go get new villagers, which is always the hardest part. Now things shouldn't be as bad any as bad as they were anymore because because back because back when we made our old villager breeder we ha we had to manually boat in villages because we didn't have the resources for rails. However, we are now. However, with our resources, we can now actually just afford to use rails and the Nether. So, if I were to quickly show you, show you on the Nether side, I I actually set up some infrastructure. Yeah, I have some infrastructure right over there, and pull that portal that will allow us to 
get the villagers from a village over to a base with relative ease. I am going to have to build a rail system to get to get us there, but yeah, this is the village that I'm going to be kidnapping villagers from. So it's probably going to be a good idea for me to first actually get the rail system done, and I'll, I guess I'll get back to you when I have this when when I have the rails done. Okay, rail system is now set up, and we actually got a villager who wandered here randomly. Uh, before I do anything, I should probably go and remove the composter at the reader to make sure that that doesn't cause any issues, and then I'll go. And then I'll begin getting the villagers. Oh, get the! Ah, oh, come on. Villagers are some of like the most uncooperative mob in the game. I swear. Get on the track. And got got him. Okay. Okay, now I just gotta take this lover and I should this should send him back to the So this guy's gonna go inside the breeder. I'll get the farmer in last so that I don't have to deal with the villagers stepping on the uh, the worry about the villagers trampling the the farmland. Okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 no! Get back in there! Oh my god! No! No! Oh my god, this is... Uh, I should have thought about this. Oh my god! You walk into the base. Sir? 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 If you cooperate... Please cooperate, sir. So, just... Well, it will be easier if I just nudge him around in the minecart. Hold on. Let me just quickly get a minecart here. What if I just nudge him around inside a minecart? Oh my god, now he's running. I'm gonna break the minecart. You, you, no! Oh my, oh my lord, I hate villagers so much. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, villager one in. Oh, okay, finally. Okay, villager one in. I'll sleep before I get a second villager. Are they all gone or something? Oh, I heard a villager. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, this guy, this guy, this guy. Might have been easier if I actually... Okay. Might be might be easier if I actually craft a boat so I can actually move them around a bit. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Now I gotta be very smart with this because the boat because because moving a uh, because moving a boat up because moving having a boat go down is the easy is is easy. Move, okay, having the boat go down go up is the hard part because because that involves funny some funny business and pistons and such. So, yeah. For example, this situation is a bit annoying because you actually gotta. Since the path is slightly short, is ever so slightly shorter than everything else, I actually gotta clear out some path to actually get the villager where he needs to be. Yeah, this should be it. Okay. There we go. Uh, second one. Hey. And he's in the portal. Hey, sir, sir. Let's get in there now with your friend. Yeah! Villager number two is in. Oh, third villager. He took some suffocation damage there. The hell is the portal? I'll do this for us to be smart. Oh, okay, there's a portal. Just gotta get him through now. Oh. 
Ah. Couldn't be too hard. And... Okay, he's in. And he's through, and he's through. Oh, this is gonna make my job easier. I just gotta nudge him off now. Like that. Okay, he's in. Oh. Okay, I'll get rid of these first, and then I'll go prepare. Uh, uh, then I'll the breeder. Okay. Let's take let me get rid of these. Okay. Now I now I just have to stick down the. Now I just got a time of day is it? Okay, stick down the composter. He should become a farmer. Okay, he's a farmer. He's a farmer. He's a farmer. Okay, now I just gotta grab my hoe. That was not as painful as I anticipated at all. I I, I thought that I would I thought that it would be like. I thought it'd be late. Uh, I thought it would take at least a few hours just to get the villagers to cooperate, but apparently it was actually fairly easy. I should probably put a roof on top of this thing first just to make sure that if lightning were to strike, we don't get witches again because that would just be awful. So I am going to quickly do that and I am going to be back. Now, doesn't this just look hideous? Uh, I tried my best to make the breeder building look good, but I. I just couldn't do it. I reworked the ro roof like three times and then, and, and then eventually I wound up with this. I added some iron bars to the side just to make it have a bit more detail, I guess. But this is definitely not, this is probably one of like the, like the most unappealing looking things that I've built so far. However though, the inside isn't as bad as the exterior. The interior is actually not terrible and we, a uh, and we actually have a working villager beard down here. I'm actually kind, I'm actually, I actually kind of want to like, put like, I just kind of want to put like a chain, or maybe like some chains above this or something to make sure that like no one can fall in and then ruin the crops. But so far the villager breeder is working fine, um, if I were to come down here real quick, um, um, we already have, we already have, we already have two babies down here, which should, who, which should eventually grow up into full villagers, shouldn't take that long. Um, anyways. Uh, 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 um, anyways, next thing that I'm gonna do is I am actually going to actually build the tr trading hall because, or at least a new trading hall because if you don't remember, our current trading hall is a little hole on the side of the mountain, which is this thing, and uh, and it's not. <laughs> this was literally just put together for the sake of necessity, and this just there was no care or thought put into making this look nice at all in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, um, time, so yeah, this is gonna, so yeah, we're actually, I'm actually gonna make an actually, like, advanced villager trading hall now, with zombie conversions, and zombie conversions, and easy, and easy system to put the villagers in. Now, I'm actually going to put this way lower than there, I'm actually going to put the, the trading hall somewhere down here, actually. So basically, so basically what I'm gonna do is that I'm just going to take this corridor here, continue it off. And then have the trading hall somewhere over here, and my, uh, and my plan. Oh, we just got another villager. So ba my plan for the size of the trading hall would be is to basically have forty villagers, so twenty on one side, twenty on each side. It'll be forty blocks long in total. So yeah, um, I should probably also show you the design that I'm going to be using. Okay, so here's the design for the villager trading hall that I'll be using. This was a design made by Logical Geek Boy, and this is a, a, this design. Probably one of the best for a villager trading hall I've ever seen. So basically, it's incredibly simple, easy, and simple to get a new villager in here. All you have to do is walk in here. So you just have, press this button to get a new villager. And then let's say I want a librarian because they have the, some of the best trades. I would just do this and then just keep cycling through until I found the trade that I wanted. Punch two. I would, so I would just keep cycling through until I, until I get a good trade. For example, this. For example, let's say I want this trade. I would just get some. I would just get some paper or something. Trade. A trade to lock his trades. Quickly go out here. There's already Elector in there, so it's fine. And then and then I could just rename him. 
Do something like, uh, I'll just name him like Fortune 3. I'll just name him. And just send a trading hall. And now the interesting thing here is that there's actually a system here which will detect which trading hall is free. And then it'll go to the first one that is free. It'll drop the villager down to the string and it'll, it'll drop him down here. And then the light up here will turn off, meaning that, me, meaning that the villager is already in. And what's cool about this is that with this system, uh, I can actually just call a new villager right now. I can actually just call a new villager right now. Like for example, well, let's look at a paper trade or something. For example, this person, I could simply just trade with him. Trade with him. Send him to the trading hall. Uh, I, I think he'll be ejected in the next slot. Now, what's even better about this trading hall is that there's actually a zombie conversion system down here. Because if you convert a, a villager into a zombie villager and cure him, it will, he will give you insane discounts. So if I were to lower him down to be killed by the zombie, this takes a while. Once that happens, all I have to do is just throw him a potion of weakness and feed him a golden apple. This could take off, so I'm going to tick warp it. So basically, now as you can see, the trades have gotten much cheaper because the fortune book that used to cost 16 emeralds now only costs 1 emerald. So yeah, this is the system that I'm going to be using. Time to build us on in survival. Time is a very difficult thing to put him down. The famous saying of St. Augustine of Hippo. That when he was asked, what is time? He said, I know what it is, but when you ask me, I know it. And yet it seems absolutely fundamental to our life. Time is money, we say. I don't have enough time. Time flies, time drags. So we now have a fully functional villager trading hall built up. Um, it's definitely not done yet, I mean there's still some ugly stone showing through some of the gaps, however this trading hall does work. If I were to press this button to get us a new villager, you will see that a signal is sent up and then we get a new villager coming down the rails here and he gets sent down here. And um, I want to get a villager with a pumpkin or a melon trays on, so all I have to do is just go like this. And I just have to click. Uh, I just have to keep cycling through these trades, which doesn't take too, which shouldn't take too long, until we get until we get a pumpkin or a melon trade of some form. Or maybe I'll go with a uh, with a potato trade. Since I already have, since I also have yes. Like see, for example, he has a potato trade, so so I'm actually gonna quickly go up here. Grab some actually gonna go up to grab some potatoes real quick so I can trade with him to lock his trades. We're just gonna go up here real quick. Like so. And grab some potatoes from here. Go back there I'll go back down there. Okay, now we gotta go over here. Give the farmer the potatoes, like so. Now his trades are locked. I, I go here, put down a compost to, to prepare his workstation, and, and, and then I send him into the trading hall. And just like that, he's in the trading hall. The indicator light has turned off. I can break this, and, and there'll be no problems. Now I can just lower him into there to get him killed by a zombie. I actually gotta, I actually have to move to the other end of the room here, so the zombie will actually begin attacking the villager. This shouldn't take too long. Okay, should be converted now, and as you can see, he's now a zombie villager. Now all I have to do is just splash him with a weakness with a weakness potion. I'm gonna stand back here so I don't get hit. Also, and just gotta, uh, I just gotta give him a golden apple. Now this 
can definitely, can, they, can definitely take a while, so I'm actually gonna cut to when he's done. Okay, so our villager is cured now, and as you can see, he is selling the he is selling emeralds for slightly less potato potatoes. But it's still not the best, so we can definitely take this one step further. I'm actually gonna lower him back down again. And I'm gonna run back to the other end of the room again to get him converted. And he's and he's now a zombie villager again. I'll bring him back up. Give him, weak, give, give him a weakness potion. And then cure him again. Which is gonna take a while, so I'll cut to when he's done again, and I'll uh, so we can all see this trades. Okay, so he's now back as a villager again. And as you can see, the price for potatoes has gone from 26 to 14 potatoes. So I'm actually going to go up to grab some more potatoes real quick. As you can see, this tunnel is still extremely, extremely crude. I mean, it's literally just a hole in the ground with a rail that runs through it that brings down the villagers. I'll have to decorate this. So yeah, I can just get some more potatoes here. Go back down, and then we can, uh, and then we can get some sweet deals here. So we can just come here, then trade with him, then just tra trade with him a few times. Which I'm actually gonna keep doing, to actually. I'm actually gonna have a few, a few more potatoes to get him, uh, to get his level up a bit. Yep, and as you can see, the pumpkin trade is extremely cheap, being only one pumpkin per emerald, which means I can literally just give him all this. And look, and look at that, 28 emeralds. Super, super easy with this trading hall here. This is definitely, and I can, and I can even do the same thing with the melons. And just look at how, uh, just look how brilliant that is. We're getting so much stuff, and as you can see, he's already an expert. This, this is, like, I, I can even get, you know what, let's just get some, you know what, for the sake of it, let's just get some, I don't know, let's get some, like, uh, yeah. let's just buy the pumpkin pile of him, just get him to, just to get him to master. Is he not gonna become a master? Or... But yeah. This trading hall, yep, he's a master now, and as you can see, we just unlocked his best trades. I can literally just go like this and get tons and tons of golden carrots. This trading hall is awesome. Right, anyways, right, anyways, this will be the end of this video. Um, uh, 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 anyway, this will be the end of this episode. Next episode, I'm going to be working on a beet. Uh, I'm going to be working on a honey farm and a gold farm, so we can get a good pigment bartering system set up. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all later. Bye.